Welcome to Southwing's tutorial on aerial photography and videography. As you prepare for your flight, you may be thinking about how you can get the highest quality images to share with folks on the ground, whether for filing environmental reports, bringing media attention to an important issue, or developing marketing and promotional materials for your organization. In the next few minutes, I'll go over a few tips to help you prepare to get great aerial imagery on your flight. As you think about what kind of equipment you'll need, consider your intention for the images you're looking to capture. Who's your audience? Do you need high resolution images to print or project in a large format? Do you need to show an expert some small feature on the ground or orient people who are less familiar with the broader context of the whole landscape? Everyone's goals are different on our flights and making sure that you know exactly what you need will help you get the most of the experience. Generally speaking, aerial photography is hard to do well with anything other than a DSLR camera with a removable zoom lens. At altitude, point and shoot or cell phone cameras simply don't have enough optical zoom to clearly show details on the ground. If you don't have access to a DSLR, consider renting or borrowing one for your flight. Sometimes, hiring a professional or enlisting the help of a skilled volunteer is necessary to get high quality images and videos. There are a few other pieces of equipment that can help to make photo and video shooting easier on our flights. For instance, with our pilots typically flying at more than 120 miles an hour in light aircraft, keeping your camera stable to get sharp images and smooth video footage can be a challenge. For filming, it can be very helpful to use a handheld stabilizer that minimizes the effects of turbulence on image quality. There are many options out there, but look for one that's compact and won't be too difficult to operate in the tight space of the cabin. For still photography, some camera lenses have a vibration reduction feature that can also help to prevent blurry shots. And you'll notice the effects of turbulence more clearly the closer you zoom in, so use the widest frame you can to keep your photos crisp and clear. Large telephoto lenses, besides being difficult to use effectively in light aircraft, are also often unwieldy in small spaces and can be a nuisance to the pilot. Besides making it difficult to stabilize your camera, Shooting from altitude can also pose challenges when there's even a little bit of haze in the air. A polarizing filter can help with this effect, but consider flying early in the day, especially in the summer, to minimize hazy shots. Some of our pilot's aircraft have windows that open, but some don't. If you aren't able to open the window at your seat, you may find that reflections and glare in the glass can distort your images. Wearing darker colors can reduce reflections, and polarizing filters can also help to reduce glare. Rubber lens hoods are also a great tool in these situations, as they allow you to keep your lens fairly close to the window to minimize reflections. Talk to your pilot so you know what their setup is like, and plan accordingly. You may also be interested in geotagging your photos. That is, making sure that your photos track information about where you were when you took them. This can be extremely helpful for reporting and analysis, so check out our tutorial on geotagging if you'd like more information on how to do this in preparation for your flight. Once you have all your equipment together and it's time to get off the ground, there are a few other things you should keep in mind as well. You'll likely notice as soon as you get into a small plane that space is very tight. Be mindful of yourself in close quarters, especially when the pilot needs room to safely operate the plane. Keep all your equipment handy to avoid having to maneuver out of your seat during the flight, and avoid large camera lenses, loose clothing, or anything else that can get in the pilot's or other passenger's way. In a small space, it's also easy to accidentally bump your camera up against the glass if you're not careful. And with the vibration of the engine during flight, even the slightest tap of a lens to the window can leave a huge scratch. This can be highly damaging to the windows, and it can cost upwards of $1,000 or more to replace scratched windows. The best way to prevent causing your pilot a lot of grief is to keep your camera far enough away from the window that you won't accidentally bump into it. You can also put your hand up to the window so you can keep your lens from hitting it, or better yet, attach something soft to your lens so that if you do get too close to the glass, it won't leave a mark. You can purchase a rubber lens hood, not one made of hard plastic, for less than $10, or if you're not able to find a rubber lens hood, one DIY solution is to get some foam window insulation, the kind with an adhesive on one side, which you can cut to size and wrap around the focus ring of your lens. Reinforce it with some tape or a rubber band, and you'll be able to use your camera normally without having to worry about damaging the windows. When you get in the air, you'll also notice that our volunteer pilot's aircraft travel at quite high speeds. Things on the ground pass by quickly, and it's easy to get disoriented, even in places you know well. Make sure you familiarize yourself with nearby landmarks. Google Earth is very helpful for this. And communicate with the pilot to get the shots you need. They're usually happy to circle over a site a few times and want to make sure you're able to accomplish your goal. After all, they're volunteering to support you and want to make sure you have a successful flight. Do keep in mind though that a pilot's first priority is flying safely, so try not to interrupt the pilot, especially while they're communicating with other aircraft or air traffic controllers. And when you land, don't forget, we always love to see photos of our pilots and passengers after their flights to share on social media. Once you're back on the ground, you aren't quite done yet. Depending on your audience, it may be appropriate to edit your photos to emphasize what you want your viewers to see. Be careful if you'll be using these images in reporting or litigation, and make sure your edits won't compromise their integrity as evidence. 
Programs like Photoshop are great for editing, but often your computer's built-in editing features can do the job. Cropping your photos to show the most important parts of the image can be the most helpful edit you can make. Think about the composition of your photo and frame the image in a way that draws the viewer into the most important features. The rule of thirds can be a good strategy here. Divide the image into thirds and try to align the most important features on these dividing lines to make your image stand out. You can also adjust the brightness, contrast, and saturation to make your photos much more compelling and clear. If you're comfortable using more advanced programs, you can also edit out window scratches, reflections, or other distortions in your images, and fine-tune brightness levels to improve your image quality. After you've selected the photos you want to use and have polished them up to look just right, you're all set to share the images from your flight. Wherever you choose to distribute them, don't forget to credit Southwings, and please be sure to share your photos and any publications they appear in back with us. We love people to see the impacts of our flights and to spread the word about the work you do. I hope this video tutorial helped you to make the most of your Southwings experience, and we hope you have a safe and productive flight.